my earliest uh, my earliest memories 82nd in Vermont I think mom had a spot there I was like five off New Hampshire and then we moved to I think 83rd in Crenshaw my grandma stayed in Hawthorne so it was always off Freeman in 118th when I wasn't with my mom. And then we ended up in Hawthorne a bunch. Cranbrook over there by Corn Bloom. And when I was 15, I had this idea of a magazine that I wanted to put skateboarding and art and music and photography and fucking ceramics, just all the little shit I was into. So at 15, it was going to be a magazine and t-shirts, and I was making little iron-on t-shirts, you know, when you could just like iron it on and shit. And uh, I was like, okay, if I need, if I'm going to make this magazine, I can't do it alone, so I got to go find the good photographers in LA and the skaters and the musicians and the good writers and things like this. And while I gathered all these people and it didn't come to fruition, the magazine I wanted, we became this thing called Odd Future. <laughs> and that's what the magazine was gonna be called, but you know, 15, don't come from bread, so you can't really do the shit, but you know, we skating around. I was like, I don't want to just hang out at the skate park, the dirty, all day. So we just start busing it to Fairfax, Hollywood, anywhere outside of what we knew, because we just knew it was more out there. And I met, I remember the day was crazy. I was wilding. I think I was, I saved up a bunch of money and bought these ice cream shoes for $200, and I'm just skating in them. And I'm on Fairfax and I meet this kid named Travis. Y'all must know him as Taco. Meet him fucking around on Fairfax. Haji from our future was like, yo, I got this spot that we could record at. It's this girl. She make beats, she real quiet and shit, but like, she got this, in her parents' guest house, she got a little studio set up. We pay her 20 bucks, we could record there for two hours. I'm like, nigga, say less, I got 10 on me right now. I go to the house and I meet this girl named Sid. Come to find out, Sid and Taco are fucking siblings. I'm like, what the fuck? So, me, Jasper, Left Brain, Taco, we all on facts and shit. It's this fucking ugly ass kid, man. I'm just like, this nigga looks crazy, bro. Sage, who is this? Is this kid named Sage, little 12 year old, just skating around wearing diamond t shirts. He go by Navy Blue now. He's ridiculously talented. I'm like, who is this kid? He's like, oh, his name is Tebe. I'm like, what the fuck? So whatever, we all on this block hanging out. Find out this little nigga could rap. We bring him to the studio. This nigga just start rapping. What's your fucking rap name? And this nigga's like, Earl Sweatshirt. We're like, all right. All right. <laughs> so... <laughs> We fucking, we just bumming around, skating, just graduate. Me and Damo just graduated from fucking Westchester. <laughs> I knew I didn't want to go to college. I'm like, what I'm trying to do with my life is not there. I wasn't even going to lie. Like, I just knew. So we just fucking, we making shit. I'm at Starbucks off of El Segundo on Hawthorne Boulevard. And this fucking lady named Cindy, I still hate that broad. 
She fucking fired me, bro, for no fucking reason, dog. All right. I stole, like, some cheese danishes and $20 off the tip jar, but she didn't catch me. But while I was bummed out, that was the greatest thing that happened because I got fired. <laughs> bitch made me work the whole shift, too, and then told me, sleazy bitch. She let, she, uh, <laughs> she made me work the whole thing. I got off. And I went to the bus stop, and I was like, I'm not going home. And I went straight to the studio. And because I had more free time, I really got to focus. I was 19, didn't know what the fuck was going on, but I got to focus. And I had an idea. I was like, okay, fuck, I'm going to run this like a record label. All the cool blogs didn't want to post none of our music up. No one wanted to post the videos. No one liked the art. So I was like, man, you know what, fuck this. I'm going to start a Tumblr, and I'm going to treat this like a record label, and we're going to have a fucking schedule, and we're going to knock this shit out. And I did that. But I can't say I. I had the illest crew that trusted my ideas and my visions. I had cheerleaders. True cheerleaders. But the main thing is I believed in myself when no one was fucking with me at all. When I didn't even really know what the fuck was gonna go down, I was my biggest fucking cheerleader that I could have possibly fucking been. And I used to feel away, because everyone in LA was like lowriders and fucking LA hats and like chucks and shit, and I wasn't on that. I grew up around all of it, but I didn't match my environment. So I felt like an outcast, but you know what? I was confident in that shit, and I ran with that shit. So when Tim, when Tim Henshaw from Amazon was like, yo, you wanna shoot this, you wanna shoot this live thing for the tour? I was like, yeah, let's do it at Madison Square Garden, da 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 da, because it's Madison Square Garden, da 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 da. But then he came back with like, you sure you don't wanna do it in LA? And I, and I thought about it, and I was like, nah, bro, I gotta do it back fucking home, bro. Cause this ain't no, this ain't no little club. This ain't the weird talent shows I was performing at. This is the fucking Staples Center, bro. And niggas got here cause niggas truly was their biggest motherfucking fan. And any nigga that disagree with me, I was like, okay, I'm gonna remember that. And I kept on motherfucking running. And now I'm in this bitch with y'all. So I say that to say, one, thank all y'all for coming out and literally seeing the growth and seeing me exist right here, home. And two, when we were, when we were kids at Sid's studio making these songs and things like that, we were just making them just cause we just fucked with it. And niggas tried to cancel me and get me out of here and keep me from countries and said, you can't perform these no more. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Nigga, you stupid. And I feel like a few of you know the words to some of these songs that I'm talking about right now. Y'all don't mind if I play some of those old songs, right? I'm gonna run through them bitches. It's not gonna be long. It's gonna be like a verse, nigga, and I'm on to the next one. That's cool with y'all, though, right? I originally made this beat for Snoop Dogg, but I had no way to get it to him, so me and my big homie did this song, and it goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> 